Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to take a dip into some technology. It's actually on the smartphones today, just to make sure that we've covered that. I know we've done a lot of work on desktops, uh, really in a variety of, of formats, whether that's uh, for, for Linux, whether that's for Windows or crossover, whether it crosses over into Mac. So I wanted to take a moment just to look at some of these smartphone capabilities and see what kind of video editing possibilities there are. Specifically, we're going to pit iMovie against Splice and see what kind of results we get. Let's check it out. So again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm thrilled to have you. We do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make use of them. Uh, today, I really wanted to get back to smartphones. I've touched on it in the past. We took a look at Snapseed recently, but we haven't really done much with video editing, and there are some possibilities there uh, in case you're coming at content creation from the angle of working only with a smartphone. So I set out to see, you know, could we actually do a full video production on an iPhone? And there are some possibilities there. So thank you so much for joining in. Let's take a look. So I went ahead and recorded what I was working on. because It's kind of hard to do that while we're making a video and doing things. So I'm going to drive and comment as we go here on the project and you can see what happens. We're going to start off in iMovie, which I do realize is specific to Apple, to iPhone, but it's one possibility if you are using an iPhone, and it's it's a good one. It's a reasonable place to start. So from the top of it, uh, you get to choose either a movie or a trailer. Trailer is kind of a cool, snazzy project. We'll do that in another video. But movie is what we're going to focus on today because you can actually produce something long term. I went ahead and pre-recorded a couple of clips just so we could have this experience together. The editing layout is very intuitive. It's very swipe and touch driven. You tap a clip and you can drag the edges in. That part seems very straightforward. Um, there's some possibilities to split. The split option appears along the bottom, uh, as you can see there, uh, if you really wanted to do that. I did not do that this particular time because I didn't have that desire, but you could. Uh, the transitions are very straightforward. It defaults to the, uh, the dissolve, I believe, uh, which is just kind of like crossfade. And uh, again, I'm just performing some basic edits here to show you how we can assemble something based on some shots. And I, by the way, these are all selfie shots. I did this by myself, uh, just kind of holding my iPhone and, uh, you know, trying to think artistically while I was uh, crafting these. So uh, that's where these clips came from. So I'm coming down to my last clip here. And really, I was just trying to tell a very simple story. I'm going on a walk. I found something I wanted to look at. So very basic premise, nothing all that deep here. So we've assembled those things. I'm trying to find a happy end to where I want to be. I'm going to play it back quickly here so you can see the result. Oh, I'm sorry. We're actually going to put a title in. This would be my one gripe, actually, for iMovie, is that it forces you to put a title on top of a specific clip. It is not its own entity, which is kind of a shortcoming. It should be its own entity entity but it's actually restricted as an overlay to a specific clip so that can be a little limiting um, in that way I, I, I'm not crazy about that so anyway let's see what happens here I think I'm trying to figure out how to play it <laughs> here we go So I didn't focus on sound for this as well, and there are possibilities there. You can add in background music, and you can do those kinds of things. Um, but this is just the basic way of, of actually creating a video, creating content. So that is iMovie. If you wanted to export it, that's fairly straightforward as well. It does export in HD as an option, presuming that you shot in HD. Um, and the export time was not unreasonable. Again, this was a very short video, so the wait is not going to be all that long. This is, you know, what does it say, 15 seconds? <laughs> so not too long at all there. All right, iMovie. Next up, let's take a look at Splice. You may not have heard of this. It's another free editor. iMovie comes loaded, or if it's not loaded, you can very easily get it from the Apple App Store. Splice is out there, and I do believe it's out there as an APK for Android as well. 
So you can make use of this if you're coming from the Android camp. Um, right out of the box, there's some really intriguing options there about aspect ratio, which I did not notice in iMovie as well. I think it just always defaults to landscape. Um, and again, the editing interface was just as intuitive. Tap, edit. Uh, the box that appears under a given clip there is for transitions if you want to use that. What's cool about this approach is that it doesn't assume you want a transition. It actually ends up being just a hard cut, which is good. That's how it should be and it lets you pick what kind of transition you want to do, and there's a variety of choices there. So I'm doing the same kind of thing. I'm trying to do, trying to achieve the same kind of video result here uh, and pare down my clips, and I think I ran into a small thing just trying to clip this down and I accidentally went too far and had to go back and forth a little bit. It looks bigger on the screen here, but when you're working with just your fingers <laughs> on the phone, it can get a little interesting if it's going to get small. So just be aware that if you're going to make rapid, rapid cuts, that might get difficult to work with in the context of a phone. It's possible. You just, you got to be patient. Ah, got no work there. <laughs> All right. So final clip here. Dragging towards the end. There we go. And I want to, let's see, I'm adding in all my dissolves and things. I'm just making sure that I've done that. So it's as similar to the other edit as possible. Uh, I wanted to add in a title as well at some point here. And I believe I'm just trying to recollect where that option is as I'm doing this. I think you actually have to push this uh, editor down in order to get back to that option that's on the screen here. Yeah, there we go. So if I can get this out of the way... Eventually, we'll get there. <laughs> I still haven't dropped it down. There it is. Text. Okay, so we throw on our thing. This is cool in that I mentioned for iMovie, the shortcoming was it has delay on top of a certain clip. This is not limited by that. You can actually stretch this and move this around as its own independent layer. That is awesome. That's how it should be. You can easily change the font. Something that's not quite as fancy here is that it doesn't have those nifty animated things that Apple likes to throw in there to make it snazzy. It doesn't have that. Okay. I'd rather have it as a controllable layer, honestly. That, that just seems to make better sense. All right. There is this really neat tutorials area built in. That's this book thing, which I thought was an awesome idea in case you're having trouble getting started. It can be difficult to figure out what things are. You saw me struggle getting back the text. And exporting was just as easy. Um, it has that universal export thing, at least in terms of the Apple interface. It might be different on Android. I'm sorry, I don't have it here. Um, but again, quick, easy, simple to navigate. And uh, I was very happy with the editing experience. The UI in both of these are actually very well built. Really, the biggest thing that I would come down to is that if you're going to work with titles, and maybe that's not a big thing. I think it is because more and more and more you see how titles are used very creatively in projects. And I think the more control you can get over those, the better, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so take what you will from that. Again, these are the two options that I wanted to compare today, iMovie and Splice. I do hope that's helpful because it can give you a picture of really what you can do right on your smartphone, um, how you can make good use of that, that little portable computer uh, in your pocket. So try it out. Let me know how it goes and let me know if I missed anything super critical. There are some special effects and things okay yeah there's some nice enhancements possibly to do i know there's some chroma key and you can make it black and white some interesting things if we want to do storytelling tactics so know that those are there i just i didn't want to cover them all in this this video this is just the basic editing interface video so thank you so much for watching this please do give me a thumbs up if that was helpful so consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome content that we continue to surface here and work on together and join the community of learning don't hesitate to leave a comment, ask a question, point out something that I made a mistake on. Who knows? I'm, I'm not infallible. I acknowledge that. And uh, join in. Just keep it family friendly. That's all I ask. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the next video. And while you're here, click on a video. One of those things. I'm in the middle, right? One of those. Thanks.